In today's video, we're once again going to be talking about the tropics. There's multiple disturbances to talk about, and we're also going to be going over that Arctic blast and taking another long-range look into the month of September and even the beginning of October. Now, we're taking a look here at our current radar imagery, and you can see there is quite a bit going on. We have up and down the four corner states into the Rockies, quite a bit of showery activity you can see. We can see even areas east of there, especially across the Gulf of Mexico. We do have those thunderstorms and showery activity still ongoing. And then for kind of the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, we also have some activity still in here as well. Uh, states like South Dakota, Nebraska there, even Illinois, Wisconsin, and Michigan seeing some of that activity as well. We'll have to zoom into all these different regions, but as we look at the northern Rockies, we can see for Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, we see quite a bit of thunderstorms and showers in here, mostly thunderstorms here on this northern end. And what's interesting is if you look closely, I mean, they're kind of going, they're spreading like this. These are heading to the south. These are heading to the north. It's, it's almost exploding out like this. I've, I've never quite seen a flow like that with thunderstorms. Very interesting looking. Uh, it's almost as if there is an air mass right here blocking uh, it from really advancing any further and that's forcing it to go out very interesting look here on the radar here in kind of our northwest north central regions of the United States as we look towards the four corner states and just a little bit further south than that region we were taking a look at a moment ago it's a little bit lighter down here we do see some yellows we do see some greens but overall this is going to be a little bit less intense for those regions then we could see for South Dakota and Nebraska into the Great Lakes regions here. We have some thunderstorms here for Nebraska and South Dakota. Also potentially here for Illinois, Missouri, and Iowa. But it does look like mostly showers here for Wisconsin and Michigan, in my opinion. Uh, very heavy showers in some spots, but definitely just showers, it appears to me. Now, as we take a look at our Gulf of Mexico, we can see that there's a lot of moisture flowing into the southeast uh, and off of the Gulf of Mexico, we see this just bringing moisture onshore to many different states, even for fall, pretty far into Can uh, Texas there. I don't know why I wanted to call it Canada there. Not even close. But we can see it, just a lot of this tropical thunderstorm activity flowing in. Uh, very normal this time of year. We are going to stop seeing this within the next month or two, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on what kind of weather you like. But um, it is going to mean the end of summer and the beginning of fall into winter. So I guess it is a fortunate thing, uh, unless you like these daily occurring thunderstorms that you guys get down there. I, for one, would probably enjoy it, but I don't know if everybody would, really. Now, we see these are pretty heavy down here near Texas City and Louisiana, potentially bringing some flooding here. Uh, very, very large areas of thunderstorms, and they're very slow-moving. Also here for the Florida Panhandle, things are looking very intense, even southern Alabama there, where we do have a flood warning, so definitely some heavier rainfall is coming down. And that looks to be about it. So what we're going to do is move on and take a look at our modeled guidance for that Arctic blast as well as some tropical activity. Now, here we are taking a look at a long range look at the upcoming temperature pattern. We can see cold underneath here for the next week or so uh, with some neutral temperatures here for the northeast. And then definitely in the northwest here, we're looking at above normal temperatures. Now, as we take a look at the seven day period after that, which is going to be the 1st of September through the 8th of September, the upcoming pattern becomes very, very clear. We see warm in the West and then we see very, very cool here for the entire Eastern half of the nation, especially the Northeast and mid Atlantic here. Uh, you can see the furthest below normal temperatures about 10 to 15 degrees below normal, which is going to be a significant departure from what is typical. Now, as we approach the week after that, which will be the 8th of September through the 15th of September, again, the pattern is still very clear. We see warmer out west here, and then cooler temperatures able to make their way far into the south central United States and far into the southeast even as well here. So it is going to be a very cool time. Even here, as we can see, September 15th through September 22nd, we see far below normal temperatures for a lot of regions here for the kind of plains into the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, even into the mid-Atlantic, we're seeing these far below normal temperatures. Very, very significant departure from what's typical. Still, 22nd to 29th of September, we still see the far below normal temperatures, maybe even the furthest below normal that we're seeing at all in the upcoming pattern at all. We're seeing about 10 to 15 degrees below normal, uh, very close to those 15 degree below normal amounts here for portions of the mid-Atlantic and then the southern Ohio Valley here where we see those greens getting a little bit brighter. So definitely 
very, very far below normal te temperatures there. And then we see this positive PNA again hanging out here, and this is causing the jet stream to just force the cold air into the eastern half of the nation. That is going to be the driving factor for all of this, really. Uh, and then even here as we take a look at the 29th through the 6th of October, this model is still indicating that we will be in a below normal temperature pattern for the eastern United States. And as we approach the end of the model run, the 2nd through the 9th of October, we're still seeing the below normal temperatures. Do I think that there's a good shot that this could be right? Yeah, I think it could be right. But do I think that there is, you know, it's going to be cold all the way through the 9th of October? That's one of those things that, yes, this model's calling for it, but towards the end there, things could obviously change between now and then. Uh, the important thing is we are, we are very close to early September. So those first two weeks of September seem pretty clear what kind of pattern is going to be driving. Uh, as far as the PNA is concerned, what kind of pattern is going to be driving our temperature pattern? Uh, now, beyond that is when things get a little bit shakier, but this model is indicating that we at least off and on will be seeing these, these troughs in the eastern United States through October, and I think there's a decent chance that could be correct. Now, for the upcoming storminess, let's just take a look at it, because by the time we're taking a look at uh, maybe tomorrow, Friday, August 26th, we see a lot of storminess up and down the east coast and for the Gulf states, so we're seeing a lot of the storminess prevail uh, even as we approach Sunday, so kind of the end of the weekend, we see quite a bit of storminess for a lot of these areas in here, kind of horseshoes around this region. Um, but we do see a lot of storminess up here, down for the Gulf states still, some for the uh, kind of mid-Atlantic and northeast there, and then we see the Rockies seeing some storminess as well. So there's just some pockets of storminess. As we approach earlier in the week, next week, we're going to see a lot of storminess for the eastern half of the nation prevailing. This is Monday, August 29th, and we're just seeing a ton of storminess going on here for these regions. As we approach midweek, which will be August 31st, Wednesday, uh, we see we're clearly in that trough in the east by this point, and we see a ton of storminess there for the south central and southeastern United States. Jet stream is doing about like this by this point. Now, uh, by the time we're reaching later that week, let's call it Saturday, September 3rd, we see a plenty of storminess down here for the southeast again. Also, the northwest starting to get some storminess, um, but very quiet in between these two areas. And that's basically the end of the model run. The total precipitation through the next 10 days would look this way. Uh, pretty much no precipitation there in the, in the whites. Your grays would be about a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens would be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues would be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows would be an inch to two inches, your reds would be two to five inches, and then your browns would be five to ten inches of precipitation, which we see a lot of that there for Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, where we really, really don't need it, but we could be seeing more, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, all the way into the Gulf states in the southeast over the next ten days. Now, there is something to show on the GFS model This is very, very interesting here. Uh, this is starting on Tuesday, August 30th, so five days from now. I want you guys to watch... This area in particular, unfortunately, we watch this play out. Look at uh, Jamaica down there in south of Cuba. Right around Friday, September 2nd, Saturday, September 3rd here, we have a 980 millibar low pressure center just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula there. And then by this point, Sunday, September 4th, again, Gulf storms can develop very rapidly. We know this. 968 millibar low pressure center there approaching the coast of Texas on Sunday, August 4th. And then on Monday, in, heading into Tuesday, that'll be the 5th heading into the 6th. What we're going to have to do is change the view because I really cannot see uh, what we're taking a look at here. 957 millibar low pressure center there just on the coast of Texas here. According to our GFS model, I want to see if that's the lowest pressure we get down to here on this model. Yeah, 957 is the lowest I see us getting here. Uh, now, take this with a grain of salt. Obviously, this could hit somewhere completely different. This could not develop at all. This is 10 to 11 or 12 days out here that we're seeing this take place. So definitely take it with a grain of salt. We're going to be watching this closely, obviously. Um, but things probably, if they did occur, would look very different. Although, it's not unheard of for a model to just be completely correct for some reason this far out. But odds are that if it did develop, it wouldn't hit this exact location, obviously, this far out. But again, we're going to pay attention. We're going to continue to track it. So continue to tune in with us as we'll track this daily, this situation. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Here we are taking a look at it. We have our two disturbances still. I think the one the GFS is showing is actually this one right here. 
which as of now has a 0% chance of developing over the next 48 hours and then a 20% chance of developing over the next five days. So that would get us to uh, September 1st or like August 30th, August 31st time frame. Um, and we have a 20% chance of development during that time. As you can see, that's going to be heading towards Jamaica, south of Cuba, just like what we just saw in that model. Now, this one over here in our main development region, or MDR for short, has a 10% chance of developing over the next 48 hours. So we might even see this one develop very, very soon. But then it has a 20% chance over the next five days. So still not an elevated chance, uh, but this one has a long time to go. So chances could really, really come up with this one. All right, now that's the update for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for updates in the tropical department with the Arctic blasts and certainly more Arctic blasts that are set to come for the fall, winter, and springtime. Also snowstorms later on. We're going to be going over so, so much this year, guys. So please subscribe and join us and watch as we just unfold this weather that's going to be coming up. We're going to be talking about all of it. Also like the video if you did like it and comment down below with your thoughts. I'll see you guys in the next one.